Hello everyone and welcome to Now some recent YouTube videos I've put up with myself and my wife bike pack rafting Some of you may have seen this bike and some of you have gone even further to ask about the handlebars I have on this bike. Now I have another set of handlebars here. These are Outkit's Confucius handlebars and I bought them specifically to help me do my bike pack rafting or bike packing or both together. And it's an aluminium handlebar. It comes in at 760 millimeters in length and weighing it, it comes in at 520 grams. Now, as you'll see on my previous mountain bikes, I do like a carbon handlebar, but unfortunately, you can't get a handlebar made of carbon like this. And there's good reason for that. And that's particularly the strength and rotational strength that this would have to take. And this bar solves three problems for me. The first problem is the crushing of the brake cables and dropper seat post cables. Now, this is my custom built buck saw. And up till now, this would have been my bike of choice for my bike packing activities. However, with the introduction of bike pack rafting and the fact that you need to take the bike apart and lay bits and pieces and discs and stuff on top of each other, on top of a bouncy raft going down a river, um, I thought, well, that isn't actually the best thing I want to do to this particular bike. So I bought the Outkit Sonder Vertis fat bike to do that for me. And that's now going to be my main bike backing bike. And this is going to be retired for going downhill. And one of the main things that handlebar is going to solve is mounting a bag, typically like this one. This is Epidura's bag in here. It's packed out with tent and tent poles and it would typically be about this wide. Now, one of the problems with this bag, it wasn't necessarily built for mountain biking. And so the straps, I don't know if you can see here, that would hold it onto the handlebar, literally put this bag smack up against the bars. And the problem with that is, even if you really, really strap it out tight, is bouncing up and down single track with little baby head rocks that bump over. This really does get thrown around and I'm likely to break stuff. Let me explain a little bit better. Now, if you can imagine that bag looped on at these two points here and smack up against this edge of this bar, then what it does is it crushes all these cables, especially when you go and turn the handlebars. These are crushed up against the stem and it doesn't do these cables any good. And the particular one you have to pay attention to on this bike is the dropper seat post tube here. And this has a little needle inside it, which can easily break if bent. So I want to protect the cables. The other issue particularly on small frame bikes, like my wife's Canyon Dude, which is a small frame, is the bag hangs over here and down, and with a suspension fork, it ends up touching the wheel. So we needed something to hold the bag steady, yet not crush the cables, and keep it off the front tire. Now, I did make a video of this a few years back, and I will leave a link to it here. If you want to see that, that will go into more detail of how I solved that problem then but this is a next generation solution on the new fat bike. So while we've solved one problem with the bike and we've moved the bag away and protected the cables and the head tube stem from being scratched from all that bouncing bag, we've created another problem. Moving the bag out here creates a rotational force and with the best will in the world, if you can imagine my hand being the handlebar stem with bolts in it done up as tight as it can, all that weight jiggling around and bumping over single track and baby head rocks, this is going to rotate. To solve this second problem, I have this. It's an Outkit Kanga harness. And what's unique about this harness, as against other ones I've seen, is it has a couple of straps right at the bottom. So effectively, this harness doesn't take the weight up here anymore even though it's attached to the bow section of the handlebar, it takes the weight down here where these straps wrap around the crown of your fork. It doesn't matter if it's a suspension fork or a rigid fork, these take the weight 
and all this is just perched up against the bar. So let me show you that in action. First of all, you just attach the harness up here using these Velcro straps. And you just loosely do that just to hold it in place. You don't have to do it much straight away. With that in place, the secret source now is to take these bottom straps of the harness and place them over the front, move the cable underneath. This strap rests against the strap that comes around and takes all the weight. So that the weight is taken on the top of your fork and this is just held against the bar. So we solve the crushing problem and we've solved the rotational weight problem. You may have noticed these black marks here. This is duct tape. And the only reason I put this on here is because, yes, even though it's for bike packing and this bike is not meant to be cared for, I went ahead and did some protection of the paintwork. One of the other reasons for choosing this particular bar, as against the other numerous amount of bike packing bars out there, this bar, as you can see, is shaped just like a regular mountain bike bar. It's got a little bit of a raise, it's a little bit of a sweep back, and that's why I wanted to keep across all my bikes. And like regular mountain bike bars, the stem diameter is 31.6 millimeters. Oh, and did I say how much these cost? These only cost 35 quid, and then I only got them in a sale too, at 20% off. So I think I've got a bit of a bargain. So I bought two, one for this bike, and one for my wife's Canyon Dude. So I really think they're a really good price. Now you may have noticed amongst all my yabbering that this actually has a bag in the hoop of the handlebars. So yes, there's a bag here specifically made for those bars. It's a very nice fit. It's got a loop at the front, two of them for the hoop around the front and two at the back. And it's pretty spacious in size at four liters. Now, originally I wasn't going to get this because this is recommended retail price of 75 pounds, which I thought was a little bit steep at first, but then I got a discount voucher because I had a little bit of damage on the bike when it was sent to me. And also Outkit had a sale on another 20%. So this came in at a bit of a bargain. Is it worth it for 76 quid, 75 quid? I don't know, but I bought two of them and they keep the stuff out of your backpack. Now, are there any disadvantages to using this bar? Well, in my efforts to make this bike as light as possible, this is the one thing that's actually added weight, but there's nothing can be done about that. And the advantage is overcome that extra weight, a carbon bar that I would normally use in a bike like this would be half the weight of this. And the other disadvantage, which is unique to me, is I pack my bikes in the boot of the car. And in order to do that and make room, I will now have to rotate this up out of the way because effectively it's now made the bike frame longer. So that's a little irritation, but I expect for a lot of you, that won't even be a problem in the first place. So this is a summary of the setup. That's it for this video. I hope you found that useful. I'm really going to enjoy using these bars and it will cause less stress, and more relief in a lot of ways. So I hope you like this video. If you do, please do give it a thumbs up. And of course, if you want, want to see more videos like this, us bike pack rafting, bike packing, the combination of the two, lugging stuff around, then do hit that subscription button, turn on notifications, be sure not to miss any future videos. Keep safe, keep well, and I'll catch up with you guys next time.